Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, today, uh, it's Saturday afternoon already, I had clients right through till um, 2.30 in the end. Um, and I haven't been feeling great, the smoke's still horrific, so <laughs> I've still been feeling really bad. So after my clients, I just had a little sleep because the smoke's giving me like this headache. So I've got about an hour till I have to go out this evening. So I thought I'd just have a quick play. I, I'm not going to do any ironing or joining or actual sewing, but I thought I'd just have a quick play with the stripes because I've been thinking about them a lot. So what I've, I've done is I've used my two widths of the little bias binding makers. So that one, this is 25 mil on, and that one's about half the width. So it's about an inch and a half inch, I think. So I've used these to just make a couple of quick bits of bias from uh, that red satin I bought to pin on and see if the width sweat on the candy canes that I pinned on my Pinterest board. They had the alternating wide and then narrow stripes, which I really like, rather than just doing one continuous stripe of the same width. And I think having having them like this works really well. Um, originally I was thinking I was going to do two of these side by side to make it wider, but I actually like it like this. So I think that's the width I'm going to go for. And I like the red. I know candy canes are a brighter red, but this darker red, I just prefer it. I think it just makes it a little bit more classy. I think bright reds can look quite cheap. And also I was using the um, crystals that I already had, which go with this colour. So. So I'm super happy with that. I have to go and get ready to go out now. So tomorrow is all about getting the actual sewing finished, except the hem, which I'll be doing last, and then starting to make and crystal all of my candy cane stripes. Good afternoon. Today is the day to finally put the dress together, join the lining and the outside, and start putting my stripes on, which I'm so excited about. So I've just finished pressing the sequin layer. The lining layer, the last thing I had to do that I'd forgotten to do was just to catch that shorter layer onto the um, longer inside layer just at the seam. So I've done that. So now I'm ready to pin them together and start joining it into one dress. So I've got them right sides together on my desk here and I'm just going to start pinning around the top. Um, I'm pinning it with the sequin layer on the top because I find if you have the sequin layer on the bottom sometimes this can catch a little bit as it goes through the sewing machine. Whereas the satin layer is a lot smoother. I'm going to make sure I line the seams up. So then as we get to the centre back panel, so I've got my seam there which I've lined up and then I've got my two finished edges with the, this layer being lower. So what I'm going to do is kind of line them up like that and I'm planning let me see, if I put my pin there, I'm planning on sort of bringing my stitching off here so that when that turns in the right way, I've then got the two finished pieces coming out of the seam. That's where I'm going to finish sewing and then these two bits will stay separate so we can zip up the two layers easily. Instead of sewing all the bits at once, I think I'm going to stitch this long one round here, so probably from about here all the way to the back, then trim it and understitch it and then I'll do the next bit and then the back then I can understitch as much as possible so it keeps my top edge really neat. So I'm going to stitch my seam allowance all the way around here to the back zip, trim it and then understitch and then I'll move on to joining these parts. Okay, so that's our finished edge with the understitching. So you can see that then when it all turns in the right way, that's going to give us a really neat finish at the top. And you can also see that this has worked. So that's our two separate layers coming out of this joined seam there into the two different zips. So I'm really happy with that. Next, I'm going to do exactly the same to join that part and then the very back part. I probably won't be able to understitch much of this because of the straps but I'll join and understitch as much as I can. 
Okay, so I've got it all joined together all the way around the top. And I've done under stitching sort of where I can. So the last thing to do on this part of the construction is to join the shoulder seams. I had to trim that one to get it through. Um, so I'm just going to sort of try and cut down the bulk a bit in these as I join them. And then I'm just going to top stitch a tiny bit down the top of each seam just to hold the edges really nicely. So I literally I just put a tiny bit of top stitching down there and being really careful not to hit the boning below. And I'll do that on all the seams. And then once I've done that, I'm just going to press around the top and then I'll put it back onto the mannequin and show you how it's looking. Okay, it's all together. I'm just going to give it a quick press around the top. And um, my strap turned into a bit of a nightmare. Oops, knocking my camera. My strap turned into a bit of a nightmare. I made it so thin, it was almost impossible to pull it through the right way in the first place and even harder to pull it back through to stitch it. So I managed to do some of it and then pulled it back and then I've had to hand stitch some. Um, next time, if I use this pattern again, I'd definitely make my strap a lot wider. So that was that would be a lot easier. I've also left it deliberately long because I don't know how accurate the shoulder of the mannequin is. And if I make it just one size and then I try and do a photo shoot with it, or if I sell it and it's too short for someone, it's kind of, I'm stuck. So for now, I'm just going to sort of put a pleat in it and stitch it down, which looks really ugly. Um, but it's going to have the big bow on the shoulder, but it means that I've got some leeway to adjust it easily without having to pull all that back through. <laughs> oh my God, it was a nightmare. Yeah, I just didn't take the chunkiness into account with the width that I chose, but never mind. So even if I stitch a little pleat like that, it's going to be hidden underneath the big shoulder piece. So it's not ideal, but just have to keep it in mind for next time. All right, so I'm just going to sort of give it a quick press around the top. Um, when pressing sequins, I use my iron really hot with a lot of steam, and then I use a pressing cloth over it so it doesn't melt the sequins onto the bottom of the iron. I use silk or ganza because you can see through it and see what you're doing. Um, I use exactly the same method to press the seams of the dress open, the, the sequin seams. So I'm going to do that, then I'll pop it back on the mannequin, and then show you what's next okay so here is the dress all together and back on the mannequin um i've just put a little bit of padding in the bust just to hold it out just stuffed inside the dress just to hold it out to get an idea of how it would look with a with an actual person inside um it's still a little bit wrinkly here but i think again once it's pulled tight on an actual squishy body it would be fine um overall i'm really happy with it and i think it would work just as a plain sequin dress like this I'm happy with how the interlining has hidden the boning and hidden that, that line. Do you remember I was trying to get rid of the um, line you could see at the bottom of the Moonstone gown when it was on? So I think this method has definitely helped to hide that line because the Moonstone gown had a completely um, separate corset in it. And however much I sort of padded and used the extra layers, you could still just see the line at the bottom of the corset. So I think this method of just elongating the corset pattern and still boning it to the length that the corset would be boned to has worked really well. It's created a great shape. I'm so, yeah, so pleased with it. So pleased with the shape at the bottom too. Yeah, I've, I've done the two zips, but you could lace up that inside and get it to really, really cinch. Um, I'm happy, I'm not happy with the strap. I hate the strap, but it's gonna be hidden under a big bow. So I'm trying not to focus on how much I hate the strap. And then this, this is how it looks at the back. Now I've got all my layers joined together with the double zip. Yeah, I'm happy with that too. So this is the double zip all finished. You can just sort of see the seam allowance through because this sequin's so sheer. I think I just needed to stitch it a tiny bit further because the bit that I'd left separate is just a fraction higher than there. And that's bugging me a bit. The side up into the strap is absolutely fine, but I should have just sewn another centimetre or a centimetre and a half just to get rid of that bit. But again, never mind. It's a, it's the first time I've done it, so it's kind of trial and error. Um, so if I do another one, I know what to do. And if I ever make one for a client, I'll make sure I do that as well. So that's how it looks done up. So we've got our top layer and then the inside layer, which could be um, laced. And you can see both layers look really neat when they're open, which is what I wanted. I think that's just as important. I always say my insides are 
just as important as the outsides. And again, if I'd done this for a client, I would have overlocked all those, um, the lining pieces that were the interlining for the sequins because they're really fraying. But as a, as a first trial of doing a corseted dress with this method, I'm really happy with it. So now this is all together, I can actually start adding the candy cane stripes. Um, I, I'm not going to stitch my stripes into the zip. Um, sequins and concealed zips are already hard enough to do. As soon as you add an extra seam or any extra bulk, they're even harder to do up and you risk busting your zip. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to hand stitch each row as it comes round and make sure it looks like it's lined up completely once the zip's done, but I'm just going to hand stitch it on top so I'm not adding, adding any extra bulk in the seam. So um, if you're using a smoother fabric, it would probably be fine, but I'm just going to hand stitch it. So Plus I don't know exactly where I want them to go and it would be, yeah, be a nightmare trying to get it all to line up. So that's where I'm up to. So all of the stripes are going to be hand sewn. Now I know someone asked about this, why I've chosen to hand sew the stripes on. Uh, it's partly because I don't know where they're going to go yet. Partly because I want to put the crystals on before I sew them on um, and I wouldn't be able to machine them if I did it like that. And the third reason is because if I'd, if I'd worked it all out and stitched them onto each panel and then joined the seams up, chances are nothing would line up properly. So this way I'm going to get the best spiral and shape that I can. So it's a bit more work, but again, it's all about quality for me. So I think it's going to give me the best quality finish possible. So I'm going to start cutting lots more pieces of bias in the widths that I decided on. Okay, so I've got my six pieces of bias in the two different widths made. I just pinned them all together at the shoulder here, starting with two of the smaller ones, then one of the big ones, then two smaller ones, then one big one. So I'm just gonna start sort of positioning them and see if this is gonna work. Hmm. That's how it's starting. I think they're too close together here though. I think I'm going to have to have them maybe not all coming off the shoulder because it's just too clustered and close to get a nice even spiral. Yeah, I'm going to take them all off instead of having them all come from here and then try and create this spiral because once this comes back round there's going to be a big gap here and I don't want a big gap there. I want it all to be nice and even like a candy cane. Alright, I'm going to take them off and start again. Yeah, I like that a lot better. And then what I'm going to have to do to fill in the gap is have some that start at the back here and then keep coming around. So it's going to be a lot more than I thought I'd have um, initially, but I think it needs it to get that nice continuous spiral going on. So I've got a lot of bias binding to make and crystals. So I'm going to start doing that this evening and I'll be back tomorrow to show you um, how I start putting it on and how I start positioning it for might have about four going across the zip by, by the look of it. Um, but that's okay, I can do that. So I'm just gonna have to measure and work out where I crystal up to it on each of them. Um, I'm gonna be sticking the crystals on with my E6000 Fabrifuse and my little waxy pencil that I always use. Um, yeah, and I'll get as far as I can tonight. I think it's about seven o'clock already, so I'll do a couple more hours. Um, and then tomorrow, I've got tomorrow afternoon and evening to work on it, and then I haven't got much time on Christmas Eve. So I really hope I can get this done in time for Christmas. Um, yeah, my, all the construction's done apart from the hem, so hopefully if I get on with this and get going, I'm not going to put a huge number of crystals on so that part won't take too long, but the sewing on and just making the bias bindings taking a while because it's um, it doesn't iron all that well, so never mind. I'll keep making, keep constructing, and yeah, we'll get a candy cane dress done ready for Christmas. Oh, and I've got a little bit of news as well, so it's still really smoky here. Um, my throat's sore, my chest hurts, I'm asthmatic, so the smoke is really messing with my chest. 
um, I've just got yeah headaches and dizziness it's just awful it's just relentless so um, I've actually decided that I'm going to take Lil because it's school holidays here and um, we're going to get on a plane next Saturday and go to France and visit my family which is really exciting so great excuse to go and see my mum and my dad great excuse for Lil to go and hang out with her grandparents yeah so it should be really fun it should be really fun we booked the flights last night booked the bus to get to them to see them from where the from Paris at the airport. Um, my husband can't go unfortunately because he has to be here but yeah I'm going to go over there for a little while and enjoy the clean air. My mum sews too so I'll find some videos to make over there but I'll tell you more about that later but tonight I'm just going to keep cutting and crystalling as much as I can before I fall asleep and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>